Hey Ramblers, this video covers the first half of chapter 2.1 and deals with speed and velocity. The first thing we'll do in the video is point out the difference between speed and velocity. Now if you're taking physics or have had physics in the past, that's going to be pretty familiar to you. But nevertheless, it's an important distinction. Then we'll take a closer look at velocity, especially two kinds, average velocity and instantaneous velocity. Now, we're looking at velocity in this course really as a representation of any kind of change because you know we ride in cars, we take buses, we ride in airplanes all the time. And so we're comfortable with the idea of our position changing as time changes. And really it's that change that we just want to be familiar with enough so that we can understand the mathematics that's at work. Because calculus is the mathematics of change. It's, it's the math that gives us the tools needed to deal with change. So whether we're talking about your position changes in a car or whether you're talking about the amount of oil gushing out of a well at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico or the change in the national debt, it all can be pictured mathematically as the same thing, as the same processes. So this is an important video because it's a central concept for the next semester, certainly, but really for all of calculus. So please, pause often, take good notes, Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps. The idea of speed and velocity and describing it at an instant in time is kind of difficult. Despite how familiar we are with the idea of speed, if you try to define it at an instant, you run into some paradoxes. Take, for instance, these two horses. If I were to say that at the instant they crossed the finish line, they were traveling at 40 miles an hour. That statement is paradoxical because this is a picture taken at the moment that they crossed the finish line. And as you can see, they're not moving at all in this instant. So the idea of speed and velocity, and in fact all change, is only relative to the next instant that we are looking at a particular change that at any one moment, there is no change at all. So calculus is going to provide us the ability to measure change as it's happening instantaneously. And as we read the book Infinitesimal More, you'll see how that concept developed hundreds of years ago. But here we're going to um, talk about, today the example we'll use is the example of a grapefruit. And the grapefruit is thrown up into the air and it actually follows a path that is straight up and then obviously it comes straight down. So it's not, this is not really a picture of the path of the grapefruit. But you can see that when you threw a grapefruit up, kind of use your imagination. At first, the speed with which it went up in the air would be very, very fast as it left your hand. But then it would reach a maximum position, a maximum height, where for an instant, that grapefruit would go up and just for a moment in time, it would be stationary. It wouldn't be moving at all before it started to move down. And as it moved down, it would accelerate. It would pick up speed until splat, it hits the ground. So we would say that the speed increased, I'm sorry, the speed decreased as it went up. It reached zero, and then the speed increased again. And that brings us up to the difference between speed and velocity. Speed is the magnitude of velocity. Speed is always positive. Velocity, on the other side, on the other hand, has a sign. When velocity in moving in one direction can be positive. So here in our example, as the grapefruit moved up, its velocity was positive. Now, keep in mind, the speed was going down, but the velocity had a positive value. And then as the grapefruit started going downward, its velocity was negative. The speed was increasing, but the velocity was negative. So let's keep that in mind. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. The two numbers will be the same but velocity will have a sign, speed is always positive. Let's take a look at a table of 
the position of the grapefruit versus time. Now keep in mind, this is not the velocity. This is the position, s of t, in feet. And at, when you first released the grapefruit, the person throwing it must have been about six feet tall, because that's the, that's the position, six feet. And then the grapefruit rises through the air, and you can see in the first time interval, it moved about 84 feet in the first second. And then in the next second, it moved not 84 feet, but much less. It moved 52 feet, so you can see it slowed down a bit. And then in the next interval, between two and three seconds, it only moved 20 feet. Now, what happens in between the third and the fourth? It, reached, it must have reached a maximum, and it starts coming down. So the, the, the rate of change of the position, or I should say the change in the position, was 12 feet, but it's going down for the first time. And then as we move from the fourth to the fifth, it's moving 44 feet, and then from the fifth to the sixth uh, second, it moves quite quickly. It's at 76 feet in that last second. So what is average velocity? If s of t is the position of an object, then the average velocity is the change in the position over the change in time. Now don't be fooled. You don't take the average of the velocities at each um, individual second. You, you find the beginning position and the ending position, find that difference, and divide by the change in time. So let's take an example. Let's find the average velocity from time t equals 1 to t equals 3. So we would say that the change in position would be 162, which is the position at time 3, minus 90, which is the position at time 1, divided by the change in time, which is 3 seconds minus 1 second. That gives us a difference of 72 over 2, or 36 feet per second. Now, as you can see, since that velocity is positive, we know that the, the grapefruit was still going up. What happens if we look at the same calculation, but over a different time period? Let's look at the average velocity from time 3 until 5. This time, the, time, the position at time 5 is 106, and we're subtracting the, the position at time 3, which is 162. And then we'll divide 5 minus 3. Here, the numerator will be a negative 56 over 2. And so we see that the average rate of change over this time is negative 28 feet per second. So as you can see, the average rate of change is a change, or average velocity, is actually an average rate of change, and that's over a time period. But let's look at instantaneous rate of a change, because instantaneous rate of change is the change at a moment. All right, let's take a look at the average rate of change and kind of zoom in. To understand instantaneous rate of change, we're going to have to look at how the average rate of change, if we're going to look at smaller and smaller and smaller time intervals. So let's start this diagram over here on the left. And we're going to look at a time frame from one second, I'm sorry, a tenth of a second less than the one second mark, and a tenth of a second after one second. And we will look at the position, tenth of a second before, and at a tenth of a second after. And when we use those two values to calculate the average velocity, we can see that we had an average velocity before one second of 69.6, and a tenth of a second after is 66.4. The difference between those two is 3.2 feet per second. Okay, let's zoom in then.
because that's looking at a average velocity over two tenths of a second. So let's get a, uh, a closer picture and we'll come into this second circle. And now we're looking at the time frame from a hundredth of a second before one second and a hundredth of a second afterward. And when we use the positions at those two times to calculate the average rate of change, the, you can see that the average velocity is changed and the two numbers are getting closer together. So now, rather than differ by 3.2 feet per second, we're only differing by 0.5 feet per second. And if we get even closer in the next circle, where we're looking at a thousandth of a second after one second and a thousandth of a second before, now the two average velocities are the same. So that's what's happening to, to figure out what the instantaneous change is, we look at the average velocity as time is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, to understand the definition of instantaneous velocity, we really need to compare it to the average velocity, something that makes a little more sense to us. So average velocity, as we've seen, was just the change in position over the change in time. So if we're looking at a time interval, from A to B, then the position at time B was S of B. If we subtract the position at time A and divide by the time B minus A, that's our average velocity. Well here, we're not looking over a time interval. This is instantaneous. And we have to use the limit to kind of play a trick on the calculation. So we're looking at two instances that are right next to each other in time. We have a plus h and just a. And so the difference between these two times is h. But we're taking the limit as this time interval h goes to zero. And as we take that limit, we are looking at what had been s of b, but now we're calling it s of a plus h, minus our starting point, s of a, which is the same as with average velocity. And then we're dividing by a plus h minus a, instead of b minus a. Well, when you simplify that, you have the limit, as h approaches 0, of the position at the end, s of a plus a, h minus s of a, but the denominator simplifies to just plain old h. And this is our definition of average velocity. The most important difference from average velocity is that average velocity oops, was just s of b minus s of a divided by b minus a. So you can see that with instantaneous velocity we're taking the limit, and that becomes the, the biggest difference between these two definitions. And when we think of h in calculus, h refers to a really small change in the x-coordinate. Um, so, Ramblers, make sure you have a very clear understanding of what average velocity is, and maybe a slightly less clear understanding of what instantaneous velocity is, but you recognize that their difference that they're different, I should say, and that instantaneous involves the limit. And we'll start doing some exercises, and hopefully, as the more we work with this stuff, the clearer it becomes. Okay, if you can't describe the difference between average and instantaneous, you need to watch the video again. All right, Ramblers, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped.